Hello everyone, I'm Marilyn Monroe. You might be wondering, why don't I have blonde hair? And I've just decided that gentlemen prefer redheads. That's my Marilyn Monroe impression. Anyways, hello, my name is actually Brittany. Welcome back to my channel. We've got some glamour going on today. If you don't know, on my channel I have a series called Makeup Through the Decades and I take you through my personal take on each genre. I've done the 1920s and the 1940s and now we are in the 1950s and there are so many different looks in the 1950s but I have kind of chosen a Marilyn Monroe inspired look because who doesn't like Marilyn Monroe? So I'm going to take you through this tutorial. I'm going to show you what her makeup artist did on her face as well as some historically accurate tips about the makeup in the 1950s. So yeah, if you want to see how to get this gorgeous Marilyn Monroe look, then you better just keep watching. Okay, so here we are starting off with a fresh face, we are going to begin the transformation. Starting off with the MAC Strobe Cream in Peach Light. They didn't use luminizing primers, but it has been said that Marilyn Monroe actually put a thick layer of Vaseline all over her face to make sure she had that glow. I'm not about to do that, so I'm using the MAC Strobe Cream instead of Vaseline. Now going in with the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Foundation. Makeup in the 50s was much heavier and they started using liquid foundations as opposed to the creams and then they would set it with loose powder. So it was the era of what they called the mask effect. Thick, creamy applications and flesh colored powders to set. So this is a very, very mattifying and full coverage foundation. So I decided to use this one. I'm just blending it out with my beauty blender. Going in with the Too Faced Concealer the Born This Way Concealer. I'm just applying this, again, there's really no information about concealer kind of in the 40s and the 50s. Um, I think they would have just used the foundation, but I am going to use concealer just because I feel like in today's day and age it works better. And then I'm just gonna blend that out with my Beauty Blender. Like so, look how fast I can go, this is wonderful. Now I'm gonna set that with the Hourglass Veil Powder. This was the first time that um, powder was used in flesh color. So instead of a translucent powder, which you've seen throughout the decades previously, now women were using powders that matched their skin tone and kind of really just caked it on with a sponge and they started baking with powder as well. So I'm just applying this all over where I put concealer because my skin is pretty dry so I can't really bake with it. On to brows. Eyebrows were slightly darker shade than your natural hair. So I'm using the L'Oreal Brow Stylist in brown, which you will be able to see is a bit darker. Brushing through my brows, and then I'm gonna try to mimic Marilyn's brows, which were very, very arched. So we really wanna just build it up and get that perfect arch. Again, in this era, the eyebrows were more natural. And what I mean by that is they didn't pluck them a lot. So they were thicker, they had more of an arch. They definitely still filled them in. It wasn't like that, but they really wanted these feminine brows that were bold and, you know, just think of like Elizabeth Taylor's brows or Audrey Hepburn's brows. So that's kind of my base brow. And then I'm really gonna go in with this uh, brow pencil and really make that arch defined. So going above my own natural arch and really adding a point there and then kind of brushing through it. And then I just kind of looked at it and said, yeah, maybe that's gonna work. Then I just took some NARS concealer and really carved that out just to kind of hide any stray hairs and really accentuate that arch to, just to make it look different than my own um, brows. And I kind of just like put some concealer on, had a look and then kind of went back in maybe with a little bit more pencil if I didn't get the line perfectly straight. So just take your time with it when you're kind of making a different shape for your brows, right, than you're used to. Perfect, I think those look pretty good. Then I just set those with the Benefit uh, Brow Set Clear Brow Gel just to keep those hairs up and keep that arch nice and high. This is my favorite brow gel. They would use Vaseline in their brows to set the hairs in place back in the 50s. 
Now going in with the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. Um, they didn't necessarily have eyeshadow primers, but I'm using this just to get a perfect base. The eyeshadow was very bright, very light, so I'm doing that. Then going into the Viseart Neutral Matte Palette, this is white. So now eyeshadow was very, very minimal in the 50s, and it also now contains shimmer. Whereas in the 40s, it was purely matte eyeshadow. Now we're getting into a bit of shimmer. So we wanted a soft but definite eye. So I'm just putting this white matte shadow all over from the inner corner to the upper brow bone, all over my lid, especially Marilyn Monroe did this as well. Then taking this kind of neutral shade and I'm going into the crease. Now I'm making sure this doesn't really get on my lid. I'm just putting this into the crease to make my eye socket look bigger. Revlon now produced eyeshadow palettes with two or three shades to create a specific eye look. So it's the first time little palettes were being used as well. We get a couple colors. Then going in with this darker brown shade and just really taking a smaller brush, this is the MAC 217, and putting this directly into the crease. Marilyn Monroe did this specifically. She put it directly in her crease and her, art, no, her, her artist would make her eyes look more round and more almond shape. So the almond shaped eyes were very popular and so you kind of brought the eyeshadow out and the kind of flicked it out in the outer corners. You can see kind of me doing right there. I'm bringing it out and kind of brushing it out in the outer V of my eye and keeping that shadow very, very high, almost above my natural crease because they wanted Marilyn's eyes to look very big. There we go. And I just kind of build this up. I don't want it on the lid. I just want it in the crease and I'm just trying to make my eyes look bigger and more of an almond shape. Now going into MAC Vanilla Pigment. Like I said, this is the first time shimmer was used and silver and gold eyeshadow were actually very popular in this decade. So this is kind of like a holographic white shimmer. Marilyn used a white shimmer all over her lid into the inner corners. And so that's what I'm doing here and I'm just building that up by putting that on my finger and rubbing that in as well. It's just a beautiful vanilla shade. And then I'm just blending out the edges just to make sure it's all perfectly blended. Um, but yeah, women would do this with the shimmery eyeshadows. This is really a genre of refined feminine beauty, which I love. Um, you know, wealth grew after the war and more women were in the workplace. So they're kind of cre there was a creation of upper and middle class women who lived in the city and were working and really wanted to accentuate their beauty. So now onto eyeliner. It's actually wrong that Marilyn wore black liquid eyeliner. She actually wore a brown pencil. I'm not good with pencil, so I'm going to be using this Maybelline gel liner. Eyelash curlers were also used for the first time in this genre. They're kind of first invented in the 50s. And then I'm just applying some mascara on top of that. But back to the eyeliner, as you can see, it's a very thin line with the cat eye. So the winged eyeliner really became popular. I'm not sure if it's because of Marilyn or because, you know, of the celebrities of the time, but a lot of women were wearing winged eyeliner. I'm gonna take these Ardell Dummy Wispies and cut them. Marilyn Monroe wore a half set of lashes just on the outer corner, again, really to accentuate those almond shape eyes that she was trying to achieve, really elongate her eyes. Going into this brown shade, now this is purely a Marilyn trick, not necessarily a 1950s trick, but her artist would draw on with brown eyeliner, a line underneath her lash line. So you can kind of see here, and you're gonna get a lot of um, angles of me trying to do this because it's hard to show it on camera, but he would put this line facing kind of out and down from her lower lash line. And what this would do would give the appearance of a shadow underneath her lashes. So it looked like her false eyelashes were so big and so voluminous that they caused a shadow under her eyes. And you can actually see this in photos of Marilyn. It really looks like there's a shadow there. Her artist Whitey then took a white pencil and really put that in the middle of the top line and the bottom wing and really just accentuated that diff difference in between those and really made the eyes pop and that wing pop like so again I think this is just a movie star trick I don't think everyday women were doing this but he also put white eyeliner in her inner rim the point was to make her eyes look as white and bright as possible 
Another trick he used to do, this is crazy. He put a red pencil in the inner corners of her eyes to make her eyes whiter. And you know what? It actually does kind of work. It just like takes away all the redness and puts it in the center of your eyes. I was kind of shocked. So I like that little trick that Whitey used to do. I'm just dancing now. Now on to the face. In the 40s, the sun-kissed glow became popular as opposed to just kind of the all matte white face. So this stayed true into the 50s. So I'm just bronzing up the outer perimeters of my face with this Marc Jacobs Omega Bronzer. Now, everyday women would just use a darker powder. I don't think they called it bronzer or it was called like a sun-kissed glow. But Marilyn went above and beyond and really contoured. Her artist, the whole point of her makeup, which took three hours, by the way, was to pretty much change the shape of her face. So really, really heavily contoured underneath the jaw, um, all along the cheekbones. He wanted to make her face look heart-shaped, so he wanted to accentuate her forehead, make that look wider, and make her chin and cheeks come into a point like a heart shape. So I'm really just using a lot of contour here like Marilyn did. Now into blush. Pink is a shade that really defined the 50s. People think it's red, but it's actually pink hues in the shadows, in the blush, in the lips. So this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush Palette. And cream blushes weren't really used. They didn't really want a dark blush, like a red rouge. They wanted a lighter flush. And the blush was actually put really high like you just saw me do, more of a contoured lifted effect. And then they took a shimmery pink and put it all over the face. So it was actually called like a rose glow and they put it everywhere, which is what I'm doing right here. So I'm putting it on the apples of my cheeks. So the previous blush was more of a neutral blush that I put really high on my cheekbones. And now I'm putting this all over. And this is what they did. It was like, they called it a pink glow and they just wanted it all over the face and it just really gave like a warmth to the face. I'm going with the Hourglass Ambient Light Powder in Ethereal Light. Again, Marilyn's face was perfectly highlighted so that no matter what angle she was facing, it, whether it was in person or if she was filming, it really reflected the light. So this powder is gorgeous. There's no shimmer in it, but it catches the light and reflects the light gorgeously. So I'm putting this on the high points of my face, along the tops of my cheekbones, right in the center. She'd put it right beside her nose, kind of in the center of her face, on her lips, and in her forehead. Now this is the Hourglass Luminous Light. This actually did have a little bit of shimmer, but natural. Marilyn wasn't about this like metallic highlighter that we're, we're used to right now. So just putting on this very natural highlight again to make sure that the face was perfectly contoured and looked good in every angle. That was really the point of this look. I am putting mascara on the lower lashes. They did not do this in the 50s, the everyday woman, but I feel naked without it on the bottom, so. Now going on to the lips. So they would overdraw the lips. They really wanted a rounded Cupid's bow. It was called like a smile effect, whereas almost the top lip was bigger than the bottom lip. So I'm really trying to do that and accentuate my lips. Um, matte lips were very, very popular. They use a tissue powder to blot. Um, Marilyn's lips apparently had like 45 layers of color. Whitey would use, he would use different pencils, different shades of red lipstick and layer it upon layer. Add in some Vaseline, add in some gloss, mattify it, add it more. So that's why her lips look so big because there was so much product on them. And like I said, pink was actually a more popular color in the 50s than the red lip. And although in every photo it looks like Marilyn is wearing a red lip, she's actually probably wearing more of a color like this, which is more pink, because it said that Whitey had to use pink to make the lipstick show up red on camera. This is Revlon Cherries in the Snow, which actually originated in 1953, and it still exists today, which is so cool. I am then putting a matte white eyeshadow in the center of my lips to really give them that pouty effect. Now I'm going on to the Marilyn birthmark mole, what you call it. So I'm just taking a brown eyeliner and just looking at a picture of her and dotting that on where I think it's appropriate. And that is the finished Marilyn slash 1950s inspired look. I hope you guys liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and let me know what genre you want me to do next. And I promise I'll stop doing a Marilyn impression. Ciao.